Hey, everybody, listen! Hey, this is huge. This is huge. Dude, no way! This thing is so epic! Hi everybody, it's great to have you here to know more about the BRICS Group's activities. Now, brace yourselves because we are about to dive into something huge. A topic that has been buzzing around the globe. Imagine this. The leaders from Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa together under one roof. Sounds monumental, doesn't it? And yes, it's happening. After a long gap of three years, the BRICS summit is back in full swing. And guess what? It is not just a video call this time, it's real, it's live, and it's happening right in the heart of Durban, South Africa, from August 22nd to 24th. And it's not just the BRICS, leaders from Africa and beyond are joining the action. Now the timing is pretty interesting. We've got the Russian-Ukrainian situation on one hand and rising tensions over Taiwan on the other, creating waves to go slow. The West and the rest of the world seem to be on different tracks. And here's where it gets tricky. The Global South is eyeing its road to progress, trying to break free from the grip of the US dollar. US sanctions on Russia and China, coupled with Chinese economic growth, are shaking up the world order like never before. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more brewing beneath the surface and we are going to dive into it all. In this video we'll shed light on every angle, every twist and turn of this potentially game-changing event. So stick around as we unravel the story of this massive summit, an event that could very well reshape our future. Let's get started. You know what? This is epic. So let's start our report by creating some context. The group's first summit was held in Russia in 2009. At the time, South Africa was not yet part of the alliance. The summit was to discuss the global recession taking place at the time, future cooperation among states and trade. Some of the specific topics discussed were food, trade, climate and security for the nations. They called out for a more influential voice and the representation for for up-and-coming markets. Fast forward to 2013. In the year, South Africa had hosted its first summit and it was a significant one. It was during the time they established the foundation for the new development bank and the contingent reserve agreement. In addition, they declared the creation of the BRICS Business Council and Think Tank Council. Following this event, the BRICS group decided to rotate the responsibility of hosting the annual BRICS meeting, going in the order of their acronym, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. But here is a twist. Brazil should have been next in line, but it stepped back because it had its hands full with the G20 and BRICS summits at the same time. This is the first time a BRICS country has decided not to host the summit, but keep in mind, all BRICS countries are also part of the G20. So. Who steps up? Russia. It is going to hold the 2024 summit in the beautiful city of Kazan, keeping up with the alphabetical order. Russian President Vladimir Putin has already officially signed off on Kazan as the 2024 host city. So, the last couple of years, the BRICS group had to meet online because of COVID restrictions. But this year, they are back to business as usual. We're back in business! Now I know we are wondering about President Putin and all that legal stuff with the International Criminal Court, but we are not going there today. We've got other fish to fry, but stick around though, we'll talk about it in another video. The big theme this year for the BRICS Summit is BRICS and Africa, partnership for the faster growth, sustainable development and inclusive multilateralism. Sounds fancy, right? Oh, fancy, fancy. South Africa is hosting the event and they are looking to tackle some big issues like poverty, unemployment and inequality. They are trying to make money and tech flow better between the Global South, which means more trade and cooperation among BRICS nations. This has already resulted in a hefty $2 billion loan from the New Development Bank and some pretty sweet trade deals. BRICS isn't just government suits, it's also about people like you and me. 
connecting. They are uniting scientists, artists, students and academics across borders. Now they have these fun events like the yearly BRICS Games and BRICS Film Festival. It's not just about sports and films, but about bonding and respecting each other's culture. This cooperation is expanding, covering all aspects of life. It's about understanding each other better and appreciating the richness each society brings. As the current boss of the BRICS Business Council, South Africa is all about promoting growth, sustainable development and inclusive multilateralism. They are keen on improving trade by smoothing out any bumps in the road and making sure it's a win-win for all BRICS countries. What's more? There are a bunch of other events lined up to discuss key priorities like farming, green economy, manufacturing and trade. And it's not just about the big wigs sitting around the table talking, there are plenty of other stuff going on too. South Africa's President Ramaphosa said there would be 190 events. That's a whole lot of talking. Some of the big events include the BRICS Youth Innovation Summit, where young entrepreneurs share ideas and learn about opportunities in BRICS countries. And uh, let's not forget the BRICS Women's Business Alliance. It's a chance for hardworking women to come together, discuss serious issues and support each other. They are tackling big topics like the environment, community service and fair treatment. In April, Top officials from BRICS got together to discuss the Middle East and North Africa. They made it clear they will stand for terrorism and want the world to join the fight against it. At the end of June, there will be the first meeting with the Sherpas. No, not the mountain guides, but I see why you would think that. In this context, a Sherpa is like the go-to person for head of state or government from these countries. They are the ones running the show behind the scenes prepping for important world events like the G7 or G20. You see, the term Sherpa comes from the Himalayan people who guide climbers up to the top of those monster peaks. It's a clever nickname because these political Sherpas are guiding their leaders through the tricky terrain of international politics, just like their namesakes does on a mountain. These Sherpas and their deputies, known as Sioux Sherpas, they all get together and talk shop pretty regularly. Now they're important, no doubt, but don't mistake them for the big boss. They don't get to have the final say on decisions. That power rests with the head of state. Why? The elephant in the room. What elephant? Now there are a couple of elephants in the room that we have got to address. Firstly, the idea of new members joining to create BRICS Plus. And secondly, the big one, the creation of their own currency, the R5. И об этом, в частности, обязательно пойдет речь на саммите БРИКС, который состоится в Южноафриканской республике в конце августа, и куда приглашается группа африканских стран, включая, как я понимаю, и президента Лоуренс. We have already made a great video about the R5. Check it out. The link is up here and in the description. This is a game changer, folks. It could mean the end of the US dollar's dominance. You don't want to miss it. If you are interested in the financial world and how it's changing, it is essential viewing. Make sure to check it out. It's really interesting. So, think about it. About 20 countries globally are in line to join the BRICS. And that's not all. The upcoming summit will also be attended by many political figures from African nations. Interest is skyrocketing from Algeria to Zimbabwe. You name it. We'll even throw a big party and invite everybody in town. Right now, BRICS is a diverse group of countries from different corners of the world. But there is an idea to add more, particularly from the Middle East and Southeast Asia. The topic is so hot that there are even plans to establish ground rules on 
who can join. This will be one of the main discussion points of the meetup. Who could be included in the list? Names such as Saudi Arabia and Indonesia are mentioned. But there is a problem. More Asian countries could tip the balance in their favor. So, to ensure that everyone has a fair chance to have a say, several solutions are being explored. One is the 3 plus 3 plus 3 model, which involves the large economies of Asia, Africa and Latin America. Another is a 2 plus 2 plus 2 structure, with the addition of two nations from each of these regions. The goal? To give developing countries a stronger voice. Experts believe BRICS should pave the way for collaboration among all bonding economies. Many countries hope that BRICS will become a platform for promoting cooperation in the developing world. This is the big picture as we approach this important summit. And then we'll be a happy family. From this background, it is clear that this summit is very important and it is still several months away. Interest from around the world is bound to grow and don't be surprised if some unexpected twists and turns will trigger tensions in the economic, military and international relations fields. But we are only scratching the surface. There is much more to explore. The expansion of BRICS Plus, the new R5 currency and the long list of countries waiting to join the club. And that's where you, my friends, come in to stay in the loop and follow this exciting journey. Hit the like button if you found this video useful. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our dives into the world's hottest topics. Remember, we are together. The world keeps moving and our quest for understanding should too. So let's keep the conversation alive, stay curious and see you in the next video. Bye!